Thank you, funny little boy. I just stepped in front of the audience. Kids. So the other day on Instagram, I put out a question on the stories about needing ideas for YouTube videos. And a lot of people had some really good ideas. I'll get through them one at a time, sometimes two at a time. In this case, one of them in particular was, my images are always lacking sharpness. Could you show us how you capture sharp pics? Sure, but there's a few things that go into how sharp a final image is. So if we go outside, we'll do the collimation of the SCT and we will capture Saturn and we'll come back in here and we'll look at Saturn. So let's go outside. important things with your imaging setup is the telescope collimation whether that be a Newtonian reflector or a Schmidt Cassegrain or a Mac whatever especially a big old 11 inch telescope like this when it moves across the sky the mirror inside there travels along that draw tube and there's flexure very minuscule flexure on that draw tube but there's still flexure and so what'll happen is your collimation won't be the same from that part of the sky to that part of the sky. So one thing you have to do is whenever you swap the meridian or whenever you flip the meridian on an equatorial mount, especially, you just need to double check your collimation. So with Jupiter and Saturn being right there close to the Milky Way, you can just use Stellarium or whatever and find a star relatively close to both of those planets and collimate on that star. And I'll show you how to do that. So after you move over to a bright star, you see your three collimation screws on the front. If you don't have Bob's knobs, then you need a screwdriver. Can I get my screwdriver, please? <laughs> That's the wrong screwdriver. Okay, bring me the screwdriver. Thank you, funny little boy. So when you go to collimate, you have three screws in the front. If you don't have Bob's knobs, you'll need a screwdriver and the hand controller. What you want to do is you want to defocus the star. So right off the bat, just by looking at this, I can tell you that the air is unstable and the telescope isn't equalized to ambient air temp yet. But what you want to do is you want to take the screwdriver and you want to place it over the scope like so. And by doing that, you'll see which side of the donut of the star you're affecting. It appears that we're already pretty well collimated because I collimated last night. But let's just say I were to need to move this screw right here. You have the screwdriver in one hand and the remote in the other. You'll make one turn. And while turning, you want to know, make sure the star stays centered. you'll be able to tell if that made it better or worse. So now that we're back on Saturn, if you focus for the Cassini division, just look at how sharp and clear that is. So if you look, you'll notice that the rings are waving a little bit. That's not because the rings are waving, it's because the atmosphere, we're shooting over the roof of the house, 
there's heat coming off of there. The scope still isn't cooled all the way. And so you have to capture frames faster than the, all of the other turbulences. Uh, and that is 100% dependent on your setup and where you live and all kinds of other conditions. So that's, you're gonna have to experiment with that. Don't be afraid to bump the gain up and get more noise because whenever you stack all those frames together, the sharper they are, the more frames you're gonna use, the less noise you're gonna end up with in the long run. But Saturn's looking pretty good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my exposures going. And we'll just see if my collimation job was good. All right, so we've captured our Saturn data. You can see here we captured three sets. For this little instance, we'll only go through one set and keep it simple. So we'll get the R. Oh, it's dark. So Saturn being dark will bring us to the first point. So Saturn's up there spinning. You're down here on the Earth spinning. Your mount is moving, Saturn's moving, the air is moving, and the rings are waving, doing all that. You're trying to capture a very small window of time where the rings are flat and Saturn's basically tack sharp. And so you wanna crank up the gain in order to lower your exposure time enough to capture those sharp details. The amount of frames you capture and stack is gonna lower the noise of the final product. So you have your scope collimated. You have your scope as close to thermally balanced as possible. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, that might be a little bit more difficult than others. Down here in South Texas, you know, really hot. Even still in October, which is great. Plus the mosquitoes, don't forget the mosquitoes. So then, it's also a matter of the planets rotating. You got a planet, you got the detail of the planet. If you're capturing the planet and you capture it long enough that it does this, then you're not gonna get sharp details. You wanna capture it in enough time to get as much detail as possible without the planet moving. So for Jupiter, that's three minutes. For Saturn, there's really not that many surface features, so you can go a little bit longer. Mars has a 24 hour day, so you can shoot it for like four or five minutes, but you can't shoot 10 minutes of Saturn and then try to blend it because more than likely the planet's gonna have moved. So if you were to get banding, you were gonna blur that stuff. Uh, that's more time for the rings to be all wavy and all that. So for RGB mono imaging, I do two minutes per channel. So let's just say you get all that right. Now you have to stack it. Well, how do you stack it to get it sharp? Well, first off, we'll analyze it. So you see our first frame, allegedly the best frame, kind of dependent. Uh, I kind of like that frame better. So on this frame, you can see this is the red channel, by the way. You can see a really sharp Cassini division, nice separation between the two main rings. If you strain your eyes hard enough, you might be able to see the, the C ring right there. Uh, we got banding, all that stuff. Looks good. So, align points. Well, before we pick align points, let's look at our graph. So our graph right here crosses our 50% mark about right there, 28%. Well, let's look at the actual image and see what it shows. So if we go past it, I mean, it's still pretty sharp. You see now it's starting to degrade a little bit. But you can see in the first 28% of the frames how much more stable it is compared to the ending over here. Like you can still see the Cassini division, but there's a whole lot more blur in between the gap. We don't want to use those frames. Oh, look at that difference. Just by moving here to here. Yeah, 28%. So we'll go ahead and do 25. So we're below the 28%, but we're using about the maximum number we can before it gets unusable. Uh, but I mean, that's 25% out of 4,500 frames. 900 frames. I totally just did that in my head. So we've analyzed our frames. We've decided we're gonna use 25%. Now, where to put the align? Because it doesn't matter if you've done all this work and then don't put the align points in the right spot, you're still not gonna get a sharp image, which would really kind of, you know, suck. 
So let's go back to that really sharp one we found. Okay, sharp, 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 sharp. So we can go ahead. I like to increase the brightness. Oh, look at that pretty old Saturn. Now there's some debate on how to do this. It will be different depending on your setup, your conditions, your camera, your pixel size, all kind of stuff. So this will be completely independent from person to person to person. So you see all the black space in between the planet and the rings? We really don't want that because there's nothing there to align to. Even the C ring, as faint as it is, it's not a good alignment. So what you want to do is increase your minimum brightness. Let's go one at a time. Let's go again. And again. And again. Okay, so we'll decrease. And remember, you can always right click on an alignment point and erase it. So like this one right here, I don't like that one. And that one. So you can select different percentages to stack, but you can't select different align points to stack. So this will have to be done one at a time at a time. It, but if you have everything else nailed down, you know, all the stuff you do with the scope and then you're analyzing and your frame selection and all that, now you've narrowed it down to just your align points. So we can try this out. If it's not as sharp as we think it should be, we'll try different align points and so on and so forth until it's like that, that's what I'm going after. And you'll know whenever you open it up in Registax and you apply that first slider and it becomes sharp and that Cassini division just cracks right along the planet and you'll be like, I figured it out. So we'll stack this one, open it up in Registax and we'll just go from there. Moment of truth. Ooh, and that's with no sharpening done. I like the way it looks so far. So let's just play around with these sliders. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see we got all the noise, but thanks to these little buttons over here that say denoise, we just click on that a couple times. All right. And then we can brighten it up with the histogram. Let's go to 80% right here. And there's our red channel of Saturn. And obviously this also applies to one shot color RGB imaging, or if you have mono, the other channels, blue will probably give you the hardest time with any planet just because it's really not that good, except Uranus and Neptune because they're mostly blue and green. But yeah, that's how you get a sharp picture of a planet. <laughs> Isn't it so pretty just sitting there? Anyway, so that was the first video of the Instagram series on me needing ideas for more videos. I hope y'all have enjoyed this one. And next, I don't know, I'll pick another one to do. It all depends on the weather, I guess. But if y'all have any more ideas, let me know in the comments, let me know on Instagram, DM, whatever, all that. So till next time, see y'all later.